All right. Welcome, everyone. Good Saturday. Happy weekend. Um, I'd like to welcome you to our Tiffany Blue Team's Southeastern Asian cooking class that's using Thermomix. And uh, uh, today is a special day because we have people coming from that region to share a little bit of history and culture about Southeastern Asian cuisine. I'm very excited. Um, this class will be taught in English. Uh, I do encourage you to ask questions, but during the class time, if you could use the chat room more, that will be very helpful. And obviously, we will leave some time at the end for uh, questions um, that you can also unmute and ask questions at that time. Um, so uh, we let's get started. Um, thank you very much. And then uh, today, as you can see on my screen, I put the screen on so you can see what dishes will be presented. All these three dishes are available on our Cook I Do recipe platform. If you are not a member yet, you can always register by going to cookido.us to register account to get a free month's access to more than 60,000 recipes around the world. I will be um, showing you what the cook I do looks like later. But let's first introduce to you um, myself. My name is Jay, and I am executive team leader of Thermomix in the Bay Area. I have been a consultant for more than four years. Well, actually, just four years. Uh, it's actually my anniversary month. Um, and I also wanted to introduce to you our three guest presenters. First is Carmen Wang. Carmen is coming from Singapore. She, uh, she uh, moved from Singapore to San Jose, now lives in San Jose with her two kids. Uh, she's very passionate about cooking and she's also very passionate about um, Southeast Asian cuisine because that's her hometown. So she's gonna share with you some authentic dishes. And also she's very, very happy that our Cook Kai Do has a lot of authentic Southeast Asian cuisine recipes there. Uh, our second presenter is Angie, and Angie um, has a very mixed culture background. Um, she knows a lot. She uh, lived in Brazil before. Uh, she's, she speaks Cantonese. She speaks English and Chinese. So she is multilingual as well as multicultural background. So she will share with you a little bit later when it's her turn. And our last presenter is Rusha. Rusha is, uh, if you may remember, if you joined our last class about the uh, baking, um, she did the uh, chiffon cake um, that was in Chinese. Um, but if you wanted the link for the recorded cooking class, I can share with you just a reply to the email um, uh, that you get for your registration and you will be able to uh, get asked more questions about it. So without further ado, uh, now I'm gonna move the camera back to uh, get to Carmen so we can get started, okay? Let me just, uh, I might be a little bit slow um, and I will be in the background, all right. Hi, Carmen, can everybody yeah. see Carmen on the screen? Yeah, yeah. I think so, okay, great. Okay. Carmen, can take it off. Can you find? Yep. Okay, so today, I'm gonna to show you how I make curry chicken. And I was so excited to find this recipe on Cook I Do because when I made it, it really reminded me of home and it tasted so much like how my grandmother used to make it. So I was like totally amazed to be able to find it on Cook I Do and to make it in a thermomix. And it's so much easier this way. So let me just get started um, by showing you um, how, um, how to cook with the thermomix. And then I will talk you through the ingredients later on, okay? So the first thing uh, we do once we load up the recipe, so to get to curry chicken, you just have to search for it on Cook I Do, and then it will come up and then you press start cooking, the green button. And you will see the first step, it will say place a large bowl on the mixing bowl lid, and then to weigh in the chicken. So I've already done it earlier because we need to marinate it for about 30 minutes. So what I did was just chicken thigh uh, with 20 grams of curry powder, so it will tell you, weigh 20 grams curry powder, and then add salt. So if you look at the recipe, it says two teaspoons salt, but my family likes it less salty, so we put one teaspoon, so it's really up to you. So I just let it marinate in the fridge. So I did that already before. So we'll just proceed 
It even tells you put it in the fridge. So you don't really don't have to think about, think much. You just read and follow the steps. Now we'll get on with making the curry uh, paste. So with any good curry, you have a good curry paste. And that's when all the differences in your cuisine will come in. It's all in um, that curry paste. So it says place 20, 15 or 20 dried chilies into deseeded and soaked into the thermomix bowl. So I'll just add that. And just go next. Uh, three garlic cloves. Go next. So 100 grams of shallot. So now we'll weigh. So let me ask you, Carmen, why people like shallots more than the onion for dishes? I think the, like the taste is a little bit more distinct, and onions are very are very sweet, but shallots have a stronger taste, so it will it will taste differently. But if you can't find shallots, you can use onion. It's okay. Thank you. Okay, then we'll say five candle nuts. So I'm sure people have questions about oh, what is candle nut? But uh, let me talk about it later. Okay, I'll just, uh, I just want to get started cooking because of the time. And then fresh turmeric, so 10 grams. Uh, fresh galangal. So this is another one when people see a recipe of galangal, they're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to cook it because I don't know what it is. But it's, <laughs> it's easy to sauce. It's not um, too difficult. Don't worry. Okay, so add uh, vegetable oil. So I'm just putting a uh, grapeseed oil, but you can put like coconut oil or any other oil that you want. Yeah, and if you think 60 is too much, you can just put, put 40 grams, a little bit less. And then we'll add 20 grams of water. That's just to make the paste a little bit wetter. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to start uh, grinding it. So it's going to be noisy because it's going to grind at speed 10, which is the fastest speed on the Thermomix for 20 seconds. So because it's noisy, I'm just going to mute myself first. In the meantime, uh, while Carmen is muted, I'm going to put the recipe link uh, for this dish in the chat. Um, and this is um, so curry chicken. And later I will show you how we search by using keyword function to search for different recipes. All right, 20 seconds. Yeah, 20 seconds done. What so, speed was that, Carmen? So it's speed 10. Okay, so it's already in the recipe. It looks like, like that. Wow. Look at that. Very well blended. And um, uh, I don't soak the uh, candle nuts before using So Linda's asking. Um, and when my grandmother made this, she would use a pestle and mortar and, and pound it. And you can imagine with the chili and the onion, you sometimes I feel like I have to wear goggles because you don't want it in your eyes because it's, it's not going to be fun if it's in your eyes. <laughs> but now it's so, so much easier and everything is just contained in here. Yeah, we will be talking about the ingredients later because we do yeah. have, there's a few steps we have to get going. And when it's sauteing, we will talk about all the special ingredients because that's yeah. the part that sometimes put people off of trying new cuisine because they don't know how to source or buy those uh, uh, special ingredients. So we will get to that. Okay, so now it will say scrape down. So you don't have, I love it that it tells you to scrape down. So sometimes I was. Forget. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> so just add 15 fresh curry leaves. So go okay. ahead. Curry leaves, yes. And then lemongrass. Um, it says two stalks fresh, uh, white part only. So last time I was like, what what do you mean by white part only? But I'll show show you in a bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So so now it's gonna saute for eight minutes at 120 Celsius. So I'll, I always think in Celsius, so it's 120 uh, Celsius. Yeah, I think anywhere outside of the United States yeah. is using that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me now show you uh, the ingredients. 
Okay. So one of the things I used was uh, was uh, chili pot. So you can find this very easily in any Asian grocery store, Indian grocery store. Um, but my tip for you is that you to defeat it, you should just use it, break it in the on the mixing bowl at on reverse speed at speed four to five for four to five seconds. So that will break the pot, and then all you do after that is just sieve all the seeds out using the Verona tray. So all the the chili pots will be on top, and then the seeds you can discard. Because the old way of doing this, you have to sow and then use your fingers, take the seeds out. It's very, very tedious. And then you get your hands all spicy. So this way of doing it, so I do it, uh, break the seeds on reverse, speed four, for four to five seconds. Okay, then sieve with the aroma shade. So this is much easier to say. Uh, you can either take notes right now or uh, later, um I will send you all these tips that Carmen shared and all other presenters shared. So you will have in one place in the email. Just make sure that you got the, you check your email um, that I will send on Monday. Okay. The other thing is galangal. So this is what galangal looks like. You can find it in the Asian uh, grocery store. It comes like this. And um, honestly, you only need a little, little bit. So to be really honest with you, sometimes I just skip it because I don't want to buy this whole thing and then I only use like one inch of it. And I checked with my aunt and my best friend's mother and my and I remember my grandmother, we don't put the and curry chicken. We use it in other dishes. So this is really optional step. But if you use it, uh, follow the recipe and just stick with 10 grams because it's very strong and then it will, you know, it might end up overpowering the dish. And sometimes people say, oh, you just use ginger, but actually ginger and this, very different taste. This is almost medicinal. So gin using ginger is not a direct substitute. Okay. So I wouldn't worry about it if I can't find the langol. So this one, you, you can skip it if you, if you can't find it. Okay. Um, the other one is uh, lemongrass. I think most people know lemongrass looks like this. But when I first started cooking, I, was, I, I always noticed the recipe said use the white part. And I'm like, what, what do you mean by use the white part? So actually the white part is this part. It's kind of whiter, it's not really very white. So you peel off, cut off the end. So this end you can use to make stock or tea or you can, well, you can throw it away. And then cut off the base, which is really hard. So peel it off and then you want to use this part. And it smells really wonderful in, in, in Thai cooking or Malaysian Singaporean cooking. Okay, the other one is the uh, uh, curry leaves. So curry leaf, you can find in the Indian grocery store and they usually sell it in bags hanging by the where they put vegetables. So it smells uh, really amazing. And you just, uh, the recipe calls for 15 leaves. So just pluck them out, wash them, put them in. And also they, they refrigerate very well in the fridge in a Ziploc bag. So you can, you can keep for a long time that way if you want. Yeah, or you can grow it uh, if you want, but I've, I've not tried that. Yeah, I know quite a few Indian consultants have yeah. that in their backyard um, together with other herbs. And yeah. also if you go to Indian cash and carry uh, grocery yeah. store, they actually store it next to the cashier. So you can't find it in the store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. feel lost. You just go and ask cashier, can I buy a bag of curry yeah. powder? It's like 99 cents for a bag that can yeah. you know, work for a long time. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I put in was candle nuts. So actually... To be honest, I didn't put candle nut. I put macadamia because candle nut in, well, in the Bay Area, I it's not very fresh. If you can find it, it's not very fresh. It goes rancid very fast. So I bought it once, it was bad, and I actually throw it out. So the, what candle nut does is just thickens the curry and makes it into a thicker paste. So it's not particularly like, um, it, it's very easy to substitute with macadamia. And when I want a thinner curry, I'll just skip it. So it's not, it's, again, it's not an ingredient you need to stress over if you can't find. It won't really affect the taste. Just use macadamia if you want. Um, and then um, the other thing is, later on, I will be putting coconut milk. Okay, so this, this is the one that will kind of make or break your dish. Because if you use the wrong coconut milk, it will taste really weird. <laughs> So I like this brand, which is Ayam brand. Uh, well, it, the, the only way to really tell is just buy a can, try it. If it tastes weird, it's going to make your dish, your whole curry taste funny. So some 
um, coconut milk they are very they have this oily rancid taste it's not off but it just it's just that way and if you put it in your dish is going to come out tasting sour and it's not nice so I always use this brand because this is what we we have always used in my family and they all don't add any additives or preserve this in the curry uh, in the in the coconut milk so just take a look at the ingredient list and see um see whether you're comfortable with what's in it uh if anything please do not use coconut milk man for drinking that is found in the section with the milk the cow's milk and the yogurt like brands like silk or stuff like that's really for drinking coconut that's for drinking coconut milk it's, it's gonna taste very funny if you put it in your curry chicken oh and then i almost forgot curry curry powder so curry powder, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the packaging anymore, but there's, there's this brand that my family always uses. You can't find it in a grocery store, but guess what? Amazon sells it. So Amazon sells a lot of things. It's called Baba's Meat Curry Powder, right? Baba's Meat Curry Powder. So um, my family always use that. And just for old time's sake, I, I use it. Uh, and it looks like this. Uh, if you want, there is also a Hokkaido recipe for curry powder that is also pretty good. You can use that as well and make your own freshly ground uh, curry powder. So if you want the same brand as what I make at home, it's Baba's curry powder. Yeah. Uh, and common uh, in some um, regions where they also do curries, yeah. uh, they don't, they do it from turmeric and then instead of using the curry powder, what's the difference uh, between using just the direct turmeric versus, you know, using curry powder? Yeah. So in this recipe, I added turmeric as well. So curry powder really has turmeric, so it's like extra, extra turmeric. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, when you make curry powder, you find that they will say, or oh, add turmeric powder as well. So it's kind of like a double dose of, of turmeric. Yeah, and uh, Jay just reminded me, if you can't find um, turmeric, you can also just use the ground, ground turmeric. And one teaspoon will replace about 10 grams of fresh turmeric. And turmeric is very, pretty easy to find, right? So I don't think we'll have problem finding turmeric here and also I have um, found I just want to show you frozen turmeric you can get in the Asian uh, Indian grocery store so if you want you can buy a pack it's, I think it works out cheaper but it lasts forever so because every time you use 10 grams right so it's gonna last me a long time yeah so this is the frozen one yeah, right this is the frozen one but it's freshly uh, it's a fresh yeah. turmeric that's frozen. Right. yeah in fact, for Galango, you can get frozen as well, and lemongrass. Actually, a lot of these things can be found frozen. Uh, the curry powder brand is Baba's Curry Powder. B -A yeah, that's, that's what I wrote in the chat, yeah. right? Baba's Curry Powder was the, yeah. you can buy on uh, Amazon, right? Yeah, Amazon, yeah. Yeah, well, perfect timing. Oh, yeah. careful. Be careful, it's hot, right? <laughs> so always turn uh, open like away from you. Don't you like that new measuring cup? Like yeah. it's semi attached to your lid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna add the chicken. Okay. So remember when I done this earlier. So this is so I like this, which part of chicken? Tell me. Chicken, chicken thigh. So it will taste. I think it tastes better if you use chicken thigh. If you put chicken breast, you should cut down the cooking time, and it will be it will be drier. So we always only chicken put thigh chicken. skin on bone in. Yeah. In on yeah, yeah. I, I would highly recommend for curry chicken dish, do not use previously frozen chicken. Uh, it will really make the flavor very different. I always buy air chilled ones. You can buy in any yeah. uh, major grocery stores. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, potatoes, just um, cut up in small wedges. This follow. Yeah, so if you're on like low carb diet, you can skip the potatoes there. Okay, so then add water, uh, 100 grams. So the thermal mix come with a scale. Yeah. Um, so yes. you can just weigh in your ingredients. Okay, so now I'm going to start um, cooking it for 12 minutes on reverse mode. So it, it's already preset on reverse because the reason is you don't want to end up with like chopped up chicken and chopped up uh, like potato mash. <laughs> yeah, so it will cook. So you don't have to think about it. So it's at 120 Celsius uh, for 12 minutes. And then now uh, 
my colleague Angie, she's going to show you how she makes this very special drink that is very, uh, very common in Malaysia and Singapore. It's, and the Kukaidu recipe tastes so good it's, and you can modify it yourself. But first, I believe Jay wants to show you some a special clip. Yeah, so before we switch the camera, let me just share with you a screen. Um, all right, so obviously this is the recipe I will, um, I will definitely include in the email going to you. However, I want to show you can, um, hold on a second, let me just make sure I have my sound. Um, sorry about that. Uh, let me share one more time. Um, I want to make sure the computer sound is shared. All right, here we go. Let's see what we're going to cook next. <laughs> If I had a little love for you, what kind of life would that be? Oh, I need you. <laughs> awesome. So that is a little video I just share with you to give you a clue what our, hold on, I apologize. I need to stop that, okay. Um, just wanna give you a flavor of what this next one we're gonna be making. So Angie, take it off and introduce this drink to us. Thank you, Jay, thank you, Carmen. Oh my God, <laughs> I will try. Welcome to Southeast Asian Cuisine. My God, I'm going to present you milk tea today. We call tea tarika, which means pulled milk tea. So this is very simple. I already put out the recipe and let's start. So Carmen, feel free to um, interact with Angie and talk yeah. about what this drink means to your uh, hometown. Yeah, yes. so it's tea tarik, like she was saying, it means pulled tea. And you saw in the video how the man was like literally pulling the tea. So that's how it's traditionally made. Um, but I would never dream of trying to do that. It takes years of practice and skill. So the thermomix does a really good job of frosting uh, and whisking the ingredients. So we don't have to like, try that method at all yeah thank you Carmen mm -hmm. so yes uh, th this is a very easy recipe there's only four ingredients which is a tea dust I use a tea dust you can use a tea bags and the water evaporated milk and condensed milk so shall we saw so over here you either put a four tablespoon of loose tea or 12 tea bags. So you can use the scale, as Jay mentioned, uh, Thermomix has a scale. I already weighed it, I put it in. This is my measuring cup. And I will put the water. Next step, 1,000 gram of water. Next step, put the lid, measuring cup, next step. Seven minute, 90 degree, and reverse one. Okay, I got it. I, I was wondering why they put reverse, because sometimes we put the tea bags, so they don't want the braid to chop the tea bag, make mess. And for the 90 degree Celsius temperature to boil the water, it will keep the water temperature that this temperature to make a tea, bring out the fre freshness of the tea. So that's why. 
And the uh, tea, I'm using it, is an Indian tea. It's an Indian tea I got from Indian um, supermarket. It's really fresh and it's give you that kind of, I remember I got, I taste that kind of a tea in New York, which is a, a Chinatown. And I remember that I tried so many different kinds of teas and this one, I love it the most. But also you can use oolong, you can use a tea bags of your choice. And later I'm going to put the evaporated milk. But sometimes you say, I don't have uh, this milk and I want to drink the uh, milk tea. What do you do? Thermomix has the recipe you can make from the scratch. Get, just have a milk, that's it. And I'm going to put some condensed milk. Also, you said, oh, I don't have condensed milk. Voila, the mix cook I do has a recipe for you. You can make it at home. You don't have to go out. Yeah, so. I will also include a recipe for the condensed milk in the email going out to everyone. So thank you very much, Angie. Um, we will come back to you after a few minutes, uh, okay. but now let's give the camera to Usha. We can get some um, healthy vegetable going and we will show you how we do high heat cooking. All right. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Jay. Hi, welcome, uh, everyone. My name is Rusha. Um, um, today I'm going to introduce you a very special vegetable dishes, which is very popular and, and in a small part of China in, uh, in South, in small region of China in South part of, uh, small region in South part of China, uh, which happened uh, to, uh, actually in the Southeast of Asia. And the major ingredient is uh, green bean, uh, like this, this green bean. Um, and I got this uh, recipe uh, in Kukaidu, and I was, I was so excited because this uh, dishes use a very unique sauce. Uh, we can talk about this sauce later. Um, and so I, I get this recipe from Kukaidu already here in the TM6, and we can, uh, start cooking here. And, and this, this recipe one is going is to be Chinese, uh, right? This one yeah, is in Chinese. It's called um, yeah. uh, vegetable uh, uh, olive vegetable uh, green bean. Okay. Uh, I will, I will explain to people how to translate recipe later um, at the end, but let's Rusha continue cooking. Yeah, sorry about interruption. It's all right. Uh, it's okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, in the beginning, they will say, uh, be careful, attention, because this mode is going to use a high temperature cooking mode, uh, which is very unique and special to TM6 only. Um, so, um, so with the previous instruction and the cultures uh, proceeds to next step and ask us to add 30 grams, uh, uh, just cooking oil. So I already um, prepare 30 grams of cooking oil, but you can put the last oil if you don't want to have uh, you don't want that much oil. So you can like put in the zero here and put 30 gram oil. So just do a next step and the two slide two uh, olive of no two garlic and cut into slices. So I already cut into slices and so put it aside. And the next step uh, just cover with the uh, the measuring cup too. So, so next we did, and uh, so this one we're gonna turn the button to start the cooking mode, which is two minutes, one hundred twenty degree, and speed one. And there will be two minutes, uh, which the Demonex TM six will will. Um, like heating the oil with garlic uh, slice, which will help to uh, the aroma of the garlic release from the heat. And, uh, and this dish requires the green bean to be uh, 
chopped into one centimeter uh, uh, small parts like this. So already chopped it here. And after this step, I'm going to uh, put all of this 400 grams uh, green bean, chopped with green bean into the mixing bowl. And, uh, and I, while it's working, I can introduce you this uh, secret <laughs> sauce within these dishes. And the sauce is called olive vegetable, uh, which is originated in a small region in the south part of China. And people, they are very proud with this sauce. You know, uh, when you talk about olive vegetable, you always say, oh, it's made out of olive, of course. But it's not made of olive uh, leaf. It's made of the olive oil. It's a green olive oil uh, special. Uh, they call it Chinese olive. Uh, which is green and uh, and also uh, made out of the green leaf of a Chinese master green. Um, and this sauce is extremely unique and you will fall in love into it. And there's a, a mix of flavor of um, a sweetness and a little bitterness, like green olive. And it's just to make you like, yeah, it's a rich flavor. It is a very subtle business. Will make you really, really um, falling into it. Can you show us, Rusha? Now you, you know, kind of set the stage. We all want to <laughs> see what you're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And this is the one. Yeah, you can find it. Oh yeah, actually, it is down. It is down. Um, show us the label, maybe. Um, before you. Yeah, the label is not. Yeah, there are the different kind of brands, but this one I bought is a big bottle. Uh, I bought from a Chinese grocery store. I think you can, um, you can find it in any of Asian's grocery store. You can ask the the, the staff there. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, it's kind let's of look that. Yeah, let's do that quickly and we will move to, um, yeah, yeah, let's get the second step done. Yeah, the next step, we're gonna put the 400 grams, um, the chopped green bean into it. So. And as for, it, um, put the splash guard on it because it's using a high temperature. So I just put a uh, splash guard, which when the things were like splashing around uh, the surrounding area, this things, well, this accessory uh, will help us to, to you know, keep the things here and not uh, you know, the area clean. So we just finished, so we start the high mode function, a high temperature function, which is um, the house temperature for TM6, which is 160 Celsius degree. And the temperature will help us well, um, just like we stir fry our vegetable and uh, which the, the ideal temperature to make the vegetable have the, the best flavor and aroma coming out of it. Thank you so much, Usha. That's the best feature I love about Thermomix, the high heat function. And we'll come back to you later uh, while it's being cooked. Uh, the nice thing about Thermomix cooking is that you do not have to attend to it when it starts a cycle. So we can then switch the camera to Carmen. Um, and uh, Carmen, um, please tell us what you are right now. Yeah. Can you see me? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so the curry chicken stand. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll just show you. Okay, can you, I don't want to tip it. Okay, <laughs> sure, wow. Yeah. Tomato, uh, sorry, to, not tomato, but potato are still in whole piece. It's not broken yeah, yeah, down. Yeah. The chicken yeah, is yeah, all in whole piece. piece. Yes. The lemongrass is like whole piece. Great. I wish I can smell it. Oh, it smells absolutely amazing right now. <laughs> Okay, so we'll just follow and it says add uh, 200 grams of coconut milk. Yeah, so remember the coconut milk, it's really important. And some people say, oh, I want to be healthy and I use yogurt, but I mean, really, I think you shouldn't do that because it will taste sour and it's not, it's not going to be nice after that. Yeah. So, and then add one teaspoon of sugar. So this one is just to add a little bit of sweetness. Uh, you don't have to, I mean, if you're really conscious, you don't have to really add it. 
Yeah. Sometimes the sugar does bring out more flavor. Yeah. It actually makes yeah. it taste better. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's just one teaspoon. And then now it, it's just going to take two minutes to just uh, incorporate everything. Or then on reverse, so it's, which has already been set. Yeah, so, and that's it. So once this is done, I will, I will plate it up and show you what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think people want to come to your house for lunch today. Yeah, I think my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we gonna now switch to Angie. How's how's Angie doing right now? Yes, thank you. Okay, my tea is ready, brewed, and I'm going to pull it out. Okay, let's see. So I will use my lid oh, as wow. a funnel. Yes, okay, and so I use my similar basket as a strainer and I put a, a sheet of paper in. Oh, the filtered paper. Filtered paper, yes, you're right. Uh -huh. And here we go. Oh, wow, that's very smart. Look at that. So you are filtering only the tea, but without the loose tea leaves. That's right. Very, very smart. So I will put it back in my mixing bowl and make sure if it's hot, use our spatula to do it. So. Oopsie. Your kitchen looks very clean. I don't know if it's just a cooking class or every day is like that. <laughs> every day is like that. <laughs> I'm going to put back my tea. Well, that color looks good. That's why. Oh my God, you should smell the freshness of the tea. <laughs> should have a party. Yeah. And the next will be evaporated milk, which is 120. Okay. And the next step will be condensed milk. In this case, um, the men, uh, the Recipe said 150 to 230, uh, but I find out 100 is just good for me. So you can adjust to your taste. Yeah, so um, that's the beauty about making your own tea at home. You really can adjust it. Um, so um, I have a guest, uh, Yen is asking Angie, what tea powder brand are you using? Okay, you uh, I, will I will share, yeah, uh, share the picture uh, and Jay will share it to you. Okay, no problem. Um, and I can I can just write it down later for you. Um, let's get that going. What are you gonna do now? So right now, the thermal mix. Did you see the video before? Yeah. Morning, <laughs> I couldn't do that. <laughs> so thermal mix is going to help me to do the reason they want to pull because they want to form the foam on the top and make the milk tea creamier. So Thermomix uh, 10 second speed eight will help me to do that. Little bit noisy. It's all right, while we are doing it's only 10 seconds. I don't think I can really say much, but uh, we'll get to the tea powder brand later. Okay, it's done. All right, it's done. Voila! What it is? You should have smelled my kitchen. <laughs> Whoa! So, look at that. It's already Do you see the form. Well. Yes. Well, one nice thing about that is every every time, if you like a certain amount of each ingredient. Um, it's very consistent time after time. So if you like this flavor combination, you're always going to bring out the same flavor. You can almost open a milk tea shop. Wow, look at that. Let's take a picture for Angie with the beautiful um, Pulled tea. I still cannot say that name correctly. I'm not from Singapore. Hit Tarik. Tarik tea. 
Okay. Thank you, Angie. Thank you so Thank much you. for presenting it. Thank you. All Jen. right. So um, we are, who is the next one that is um, Rusha almost ready? I can. Yeah, 55, I can seconds, 55 seconds. Okay. Yeah. I can show you the curry chicken that I've already. Uh, okay, here. sure. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, get to Carmen first. We'll put both on the screen. So we will do it the same. Um, we'll just mute Rusha for time being and then see Carmen. How's Carmen doing? Yeah, so I've taken it out and then I've just put it in the thermal serving bowl, which I really like because it will keep your dish warm for a long time. How do you like, get that? This one, this one, I you can get it by hosting a cooking experience if you want with your friends, with uh, two other people, and then you, you will be able to, you'll be able to select this, uh, this gift. It to. looks very nice. It has a base, plastic base. Yeah. Can you pose for my picture? I just wanted to take oh, a yeah, nice yeah, one sure. with you and the curry chicken. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. And then um, did you garnish it a little bit with oh, some yeah. curry? I just, I just garnished with curry, fresh curry leaves on top. I, I can't, sorry, I can't really show you. And that's okay. No worries. <laughs> we can see it. Uh, you, later yeah. you can take a picture and yeah. we'll share. But yeah. it looks exactly as the one on okay. the recipe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly like the, yeah. yeah. Exactly like the one on the screen. And then you can keep it warm. So as yeah. Carmen said, contact your thermal mix consultant and book a cooking experience so you will have a chance to earn it for free. Uh, it's actually sold for more than $69, sold for $69 plus tax in some other countries. Here you can only get it by hosting a cooking experience uh, with a consultant. So I do encourage you to talk to your consultant about how to get that. And thank you, Carmen, for presenting this. And let's now move on to Usha to finish our vegetable dish. Oh yeah, so the eight minutes uh, high temperature cooking is over. So we just uh, are going to the next step, which is um, we ask us for 50 grams of the olive vegetable here. Just put it here. Okay. And the next two uh, grams of salt. And I already put everything together and they are asking for one gram of sugar. So just a small measuring cup. So I just smart. It. That's really, really smart. The sugar yeah. without using the <laughs> Yes, it's yeah, I know. If the next one you want, ask for the measuring cup because you opened it up. So sure. and so all finished, and we just um yeah, no need to put this measuring cup. So just leave it open for another two minutes for Roma. Okay, and, uh, so while you wait for that two minutes, I'm gonna switch camera um, to my, um, hold on a second, I will just switch the camera to um, let you see my cook I do screen. Um, reason being, um, I wanna show you how to translate um, this recipe um, by using Google Chrome function. So if you can see my screen, this is the recipe that we used. Uh, again, the website is called cookido.thermomix.com, but if you wanna shorten it, you don't remember, it's cookido with double O dot US. You will get to the same place. And then when you do that, um, you can, let's say for me, I've already collected uh, my recipe collection for this particular class of three dishes. But if you never look for it, you can go to the search function. Um, you can put the keyword. Obviously, if you don't know how to do Chinese keyword, that's really, really tough. So you can use the link that we gave you uh, in the email that you receive. And then when you pull it up, you will see this is in Chinese. For those who do not read Chinese but still want to cook, what do you do? Google Chrome has a function to translate for you. So if you translate this one into English, see my screen has already changed into English. So you can always say, always translate Chinese because I, I read Chinese, so I don't like to have that feature, but if that works for you, you can absolutely use it. So this is the Google's translate function, which is very handy. 
for me, sometimes I want to see French cuisine. Sometimes I want to see, um, you know, Italian cuisine. I want to cook the authentic ones. There are a few of those cuisines in the U.S. website as well, but sometimes I just want to explore. And this feature is very handy. Um, so uh, any questions in the chat room about using this particular function? Because I think this is a very handy function to have. If not, then I will switch back to Rusha and have her take it um, off, um, finish it up. Oh, hi. So yeah, the, so the two minutes function is done. So let's open up. And we'll see. Um, I get a white place because I want to have the contract color of green and white. So to show you how green it is because I really like the high, high heat mode of TM6 because which keeps the color of the green of the vegetable and the aroma of this dish is just amazing and fantastic. And it's also naturally non-stick, like, although it's, um, it's a stainless steel bowl, but it's naturally non-stick for cooking vegetables like this, right? Yeah. I think as a consultant, we learned a lot of tricks. So if any of you are interested to join us um, in the team, if you're in the Bay Area, uh, you can definitely join um, you know, uh, the local team. But if you are other, in other parts of the country, um, you know, I, I, I'm sure I can, um, you, you can talk to your consultant about it, how to become a consultant. So look at that, wow. This looks yeah. so housey and looks so delicious. Yeah, it really looks like, like a touch of the vegetable, uh, the olive vegetable, um, and which makes this, um, the green bean taste so good. And the flavor also penetrates into the center of the green bean. And, uh, can you show us one more time about that all the vegetables, uh, the, the, just to you know, show us the bottle so we can see the one you bought. I know there could be different varieties, the label, the, yes, the, the cap. Oh yeah, the cap. I think the label kind of when we open it up, it's, it's gone. And okay, uh, no there's one of the brand. Actually, this is my second bottle. Yeah, like recently I got a small one, but this one's the bigger one. So I bought this one. I guess this one's a little better than the one I bought previously because less oil. I, I don't like that much oil. <laughs> and and the, the flavor, like I said before, is a the tint of um, olive, green olive, and, um, and a little bit bitterness and like uh, also like a, a hint of uh, liquor, liquor rice, gan cha. Okay. And so the, the flavor is very um, fantastically complex and it's good for any vegetable in the dishes or uh, meat, even meats or fish if you want to. So the flavor is strong, uh, you know, but you can um, put it inside in, in, into any dish you want like vegetables and meat and fish. It's great. It's a, it's a very good uh, add up. Um, so, Rusha, can I take a photo, a screenshot, a photo um, that you are holding the dish that you just cooked? Uh, looks amazing. And thank you for presenting this dish to us today. So, I'm going to bring the other two presenters uh, to the screen to see if there's any questions in the chat room or if you want to. Sorry, I, I pinged the wrong one. Um, and uh, um, and then um, if you have any questions, you want to come off mute, you want to ask the presenters, please feel free to get off mute or if you prefer to use the chat room, uh, definitely. So the tea powder brand, um, Angie, um, can you spell it? Because it's not very clear to see. W-A-G-H-B-A-K-R-I. Okay, I see. That is a tea powder brand. Any other question we did not? Okay, somebody asked me, uh, this is for Carmen. If I use turmeric powder, is it the same amount as fresh ones? Uh, so for 10 grams of turmeric, fresh turmeric, I use about one teaspoon of turmeric powder. 
Yeah. So, so one 10 part. gram of fresh equals to one teaspoon of yeah. powder. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Can we please see the olive veggie cup more close? And thank you, Belinda, for joining us. Um, Belinda is a, a is right now the uh, sales regional manager for the virtual market, but she used to manage, she actually developed the whole San Francisco Bay Area. So I wanna thank her for all the support as well before we answer any, any other questions. Um, so um, the, um, I wanna make sure the olive veggie cup more closely. So um, Rusha, can you hold it closer to the screen? So then the guest wanted to see, no, not that one, the bottle. The okay. cap, so people know what it looks like. <laughs> the okay, I can give you another bottle if you want to take no, a look. The, okay, cap, the cap has the label. Oh, the cap? Yes, that's right. That's the one. Cold is still. That's the brand. Yeah, they call it like Hong Kong olive vegetable, like in Chinese, like Hong Kong olive vegetable. Uh, okay. It's made from Guangdong. So that's okay. what where, where the vegetable sauce was originated. Okay, thank you. Any other questions we have from the audience? Well, if we don't have more questions, I will close today's cooking class. And I want to thank Carmen, uh, Angie, as well as Rusha for jointly presenting this class. And also thank you for all the guests who are joining. You will get an email no later than Monday uh, with the list of ingredients, a list of recipes. Uh, mm -hmm. as well as tips that we shared today of how to do substitutes. So thank you all very much. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Bye.